Hi, this is Ben with Novolux Stereophonic. Today we're going to do a video demonstration of the classic Macintosh MC2505 uh, amplifier. This is a solid state amp with output transformers, typical of Macintosh. Uh, this unit was produced between 1967 and 1977. Uh, retail on it back in that day was $550. So just an example of how Macintosh holds its value and actually appreciates in a certain sense over the years. Um, this version, or this, this, this uh, model had probably three or four different versions. This example is a, an early serial number, which means it has a slightly different um, circuit you know, uh, topology on the inside, giving a little bit more adjustment of DC offset and other things. Uh, and it also had a, uh, a difference in the way that the meter range was printed on the glass. So this unit has undergone a full restoration. I'll go into more detail on that in a little bit. Uh, but the main thing that we can see in this uh, specific shot is that the glass is in beautiful condition. The reason being is this is a brand new piece of glass. One of the unique things about the Macintosh company is they still produce glass face plates for units that are long discontinued. So I was able to source this from the Macintosh factory in Binghamton. This is a brand new piece of 2505 glass. Uh, the, as I mentioned earlier, there's different versions of this piece. When I put the new glass on, I noticed that the meter range was the indicators for off zero, negative 10, and negative 20 were shifted by one position. So I actually had to go in and modify the connections on the back of the switch so that that switch would match up with the new glass. Just a note on that. So this piece is an early serial number with the glass produced from the late version. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on and we're gonna see the, you know, the beautiful lights on the back of this Mac. So we've got um, the red and the green text indication, and then the backlight on the meters. This specific model, uh, this version seems to be a little bit dimmer in the meter than other ones. This has a, a bright white LED kit in it, um, but the, the meters are still a little bit less intense than, than pictures I've seen of units with newer serial numbers. So keep that in mind if you're looking at this unit. The, the, the blue meters are absolutely beautiful, but they're not gonna like be super bright blasting in your face and they may not match up exactly with, with some of your modern Mac equipment. Um, I tried to do a green LED kit in the bottom here, but I had problems with this uh, the red power indicator. So I've kept this as incand incandescent on the, uh, on the backlight for the text. What I found is that the, if I put in a green LED, this would come through green. Um, and then the old faceplate, the original, it wouldn't come through at all and then you would miss your, your power indicator. So I opted for the, um, the incandescent and it actually makes a smoother, you know, better lit text. You don't get hot spots in the text. So I think this is the best balance. It's got incandescence for the, for the text and then LED for the, for the meter where, it, where, you, where you really want that extra brightness. All right, so just a quick note on powering this guy up. You'll see at the beginning when the power supply first comes online, these needles are gonna do a little bit of jumping. So I always recommend when turning on a piece, especially of this vintage, that you, when you have the option where you can cut the speakers out, is that you power it on first, you wait for that little blip, the power supply to stabilize, and then you go ahead and click on your speakers. For this first test, I'm gonna leave this off because we're gonna feed a sine wave into this device. And uh, this is for the purpose of um, showing the function and the calibration of the meters. So I'm gonna start this at the zero position. And then I'm going to feed a sine wave into it, and I'm gonna be slowly increasing the volume here. And this unit has been calibrated so that when we hit zero, we're outputting the rated power, which in this case is 50 watts. So that is this amp putting out full power. And as we back it down, you'll see that the meters track together. I'm gonna lower this down and then go through the meter ranges. So let's, I'm gonna start all the way at the bottom so they don't peg this meter on accident. So this is the negative 20 position, which gives you the most sensitivity. And then as I back it through the ranges, you'll see them click down, all right? Now I'm gonna start us off in the negative 10 range here to do a little demonstration on these potentiometers. So what I found with this unit, you know, and this may be consistent with other 2505s of this vintage is that the, the wipers and the, you know, the, the ratings on these potentiometers aren't exact. So what happens is as you attenuate these down, uh, the meters aren't gonna track exactly with one another, which means you're gonna get an imbalance. So the main gist of it is if you're um, buying this amplifier, I'm gonna take this down to the dot right? So just because these are both indicated on the dot does not mean the channels are outputting at equal volume because the resistance at that point in the potentiometer might not be consistent. So 
And as I raise this up, you can see that the left channel <clears throat> is obviously louder than the right at this point. In order to balance this out, I would have to come back and just compensate on this meter a little bit. And you can do this by ear if you've got an image with a, or a, a recording with a good stereo image and you're listening for a vocalist dead center in the image. You could back, just back off the left channel and balance it out till it centers. Or you could do what I'm doing here is just feeding a sine wave into this um, so you get a consistent steady output on the meter. Um, so again, to review, th these aren't the exact same value all the way through the wiper range, so there might be a little bit of inconsistency in the meter. If you're looking at this right now, this is on the dot, this is a little bit back, but the amplifier is balanced. So the way that I recommend doing this, um, if you purchase this amplifier, is to actually run these wide open, which is basically the potentiometer out of circuit, and then you'll get a much better amplifier balance. All right. Okay, so now let's move on to some, uh, some music tests. So I'm going to bring up some Bach on here. So it's just a little demonstration of the output on the amplifier. Uh, next thing we're going to do is spin this around and look at the back panel and we'll take a peek at the inside. The MC2505 is now spun around. We're looking at the back panel. Zero number on this unit is 10K25. You also notice that the uh, terminal blocks have been replaced. When I originally got this unit, uh, the dividers between some of the taps were broken, and that can be a risk. For example, if you're running a speaker on the forearm tap and your spades end up touching each other, you could short out the amplifier and cause a problem. So I wanted to make sure this thing was safe for you know, the upcoming years. So again, this, these parts were sourced directly from Macintosh. This is an original factory part. Um, another th interesting thing to note on the back channel here is the fact that on early Macintosh amps, for some reason, they reversed the direction of these terminal blocks. In other words, the one indicated for the right output is actually on the left side of the amplifier if you have it spun around. So the one that says left output actually corresponds to the meter up here, and the one that says right output corresponds to the meter here. So if you are running your preamplifier and changing the balance and you're seeing that your right speaker is getting louder, but the left meter is the one increasing, double check your connections on the back and just make sure you follow the text. So left output, right output. Um, I'm going to zoom in on the terminal blocks here so we can get a look at the indications on the tap. It's kind of hard to see, but we've got common, 4, 8, and 16 ohm. So the way you connect your speaker, if you had an 8 ohm speaker, is your negative would go to the common and your positive would go to the, to the 8. Now, the reason that this is laid out like this is because uh, Macintosh solid state amplifiers, the majority of them use something called an autoformer, which is similar to an output transformer in a tube amp. And really all that you need to know about it is it means that whether you're using a 4 ohm, 8 ohm, or 16 ohm speakers, you're always gonna get the rated power. So on a typical solid state amplifier, if you connect an 8 ohm load, you're gonna get a certain number of watts, let's say 100 watts. But if you connect a 4 ohm load to it, you might get double the power, right? So this, the way that running it with an auto former like this is regardless of what's on the outside, as long as you use the correct taps, you're gonna get 50 watts out of this amp. Okay, we're now looking at the inside of the MC2505 with the bottom cover removed. Just want to do a quick swing through this uh, restoration and review the parts that have been changed. So, starting with the power supply, the, uh, the rec all original rectifier diodes are all still in place. The large CAN capacitors, the single section ones tested fine, those are still in place. All the original resistors, all that tested fine. Uh, the electrolytic capacitor multi-section CANs were both failing, so those ones got a full rebuild there went through a process called restuffing where I've actually removed the can itself, pulled out all the guts, put in uh, brand new electrolytic capacitors, resealed it so that we maintain the original look of the amplifier on both the outside and the inside. You can see that all the axial electrolytics uh, were replaced with high quality Vichy, um, uh, some, some uh, Sprague atoms 
they're good quality electrolytics um, for all these replacements. And then also small signal transistors. I had probably uh, three or four of them that had failed, causing the amplifier to not operate properly. So I went ahead and replaced all the small signal transistors. Uh, another thing to note while we're in here is this is that early serial number that gives us a little bit more adjustment. So there's two adjustment trimmers here, here, and here. And on some of the newer versions, you don't get that adjustment. So I've gone through the, the DC offset uh, adjustment and the bias adjustment for this amplifier. It's all ready to go. And the last thing is, as I mentioned earlier on this control here, this is the, um, the meter attenuation. All the original components are there. Everything just got shifted one position over uh, to match up with the new faceplate glass. The final thing that I want to go over in this video is the importance of properly boxing uh, Macintosh equipment for shipping. Because of the glass face plates, they need a little bit of extra protection in order to make sure that they arrive safely. The good news about the Macintosh stuff is they use the same box type and they still do to this day for, for you know similar amps in a series. So even though this box is for a C27, this is going to work great for shipping this MC2505. So when I open this up, we'll see that it's a box inside of a box. They've done a really good job of diagramming how to properly pack this. And this is one of the things they do if you send an amplifier back for service, they like to have the original packaging so things don't get damaged even more on the way back to the factory for repair. Um, but you can see this is all clearly diagrammed on here, how to lay this out. This is really cool how the feet actually fit into this uh, base. And this, this has little cutouts for the panel lock and stuff like that, which I'll show you in a second. Um, I'm missing these cardboard corners, but for suspending this one inside the inner box, there's gonna be some, you know, some foam corners, something like that, so that this stays completely suspended within the main box. And then to protect the what's left of the text on this box, I'm actually gonna um, put this inside of another box. So this one's gonna be all, you know, triple boxed in a way. So let me open this thing up. And this is, you know, where the, the protection really happens. So there's holes, you know, strategically drilled inside of this piece of cardboard for different uh, chassis models. So they could use the same piece of cardboard for multiple units. And you can see this little dip down here. This is to suspend the glass. So when I stick the amplifier in here, the four feet will shove into these holes and then the glass will hang over the edge. Um, and then there's another piece. It looks like this that comes over and sits on the top. So this is kind of a series of a few pieces of cardboard that are going to sit on top of the unit and come in front of the glass like that. So what this does is it allows the, the unit to be, you know, suspended so that it's protected from vibrations and the glass won't touch either side or the front so that it doesn't get cracked in shipment. So that's it for the MC2505 video. I hope you enjoyed. If you um, like this video and you want to see more, uh, please subscribe to my channel and there will be more to come.